Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you live from the from the uh, Renaissance Bank office on Windward Parkway in beautiful Alpharetta. And folks, uh, we're delighted to be back. Um, yeah, we were out of here for a while because of the pandemic, but Renaissance was always on the case trying to help small businesses, particularly through uh, PPP and some of the other issues that uh, business owners had to go through. And one of the things about Renaissance is they do it in a personal way. Uh, they're big enough to handle pretty much any need you can throw at them, small enough to do it uh, with real people and not hiding behind an 800 number uh, in that big bank experience. And you know what I'm talking about. If you've had that and you want something different from your bank, go to renaissancebank.com and find their local office and uh, give them a call. I think you'll be glad you did. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. And now I want to welcome Oren Ross. Oren is with Oren Ross and Associates. Oren, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you. So uh, let's talk about you and how you're serving folks out there. What are you doing at Oren Ross and Associates? Uh, well, I'm an estate planning attorney, so I help people uh, you know, take care of what happens when they pass away. I like that. Um, because as we were talking before we came on the air, most people hear estate planning. Mm-hmm. And some of them don't even know what you're talking about, right? Yeah, most people don't. You know, right. They hear estate and they think, uh, you know, I mean some uh, elegant manner in England, <laughs> right? But it, an estate is just what you have, what you own. So, you know, your house, your car, your bank accounts, all that. We plan for what happens when you're not here anymore. Regardless of whether your property is in England or here or whether you even have a, a piece of property, well, right? I'm, I mean, I'm, it's. I'm not licensed in England, so I can't handle that one. But, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, anything in the U.S., uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, 10,000, 10 million, 10 billion, you need to plan for it. And this is something, you know, we were talking about this before we came on the air, and I think this is important maybe just to cover briefly before we get into some of the details of estate planning. But this is something a lot of people put off, a lot of people don't address because they they don't want to acknowledge they're going to die or wh- whatever reason they've got psychological reason. They just don't address something they really need to take care of in advance. Right. Yeah. You know, there is um, Ben Franklin said, there's two things you can count on death and taxes. Mm-hmm. It's all, you know, it's going to happen to everybody at some point. And you need to make sure that you're not leaving your family with a, with a mess with, uh, you know, huge expenses. Nobody knows what to do. You need to have a plan laid out so that people can, can manage because that's a really hard time. For your family, if, if you've passed away, you don't need to add to that hassle. Sure, sure. So let's talk about um, probate. Okay. So probate's one of those terms, I think, uh, again, a lot of people maybe have heard the term and don't know what it is. All right. So probate is it refers to the probate court. So when someone passes away and uh, we have to figure out where their assets go through their estate, that goes through the probate court. So there's... There's two basic ways it goes through. If you don't have a will, we, we go through the intestate process and figure out where things go. And if you do have a will, we still go through probate, but the court is overseeing what happens and making sure the executor does what you wanted. So in, in case of no will, mm-hmm. the probate court is deciding really what happens, right, in terms of the distribution of assets and and uh, uh Next of kin and what have you, right? Right. So uh, if you don't have a will, uh, there's kind of a free-for-all to decide who the administrator would be. It's basically a race to see who can get it first. And then after that, uh, the court has a family tree that they use to decide who gets what. So th- the problem with that is that uh, a lot of people assume that everything would just go to your spouse, but it doesn't. If you have a spouse and children, it gets split among your spouse and your children. If you don't have a spouse, it goes to the kids, you know, it just goes down the family tree as you go. And if your kids are under age, what happens in that case? Well, then things have to go through uh, conservatorship. So things have to be held uh, through 
another process in probate, which takes a long time. It's really expensive, basically until they're 18. And at that point, it can be turned over to them. Yeah, and that's kind of where I was going is that's got to be expensive. Um, Anytime you have an outside party Mm -hmm. that has no connection to you, your family, that's got to be an expensive process. And again, someone that doesn't know your particulars. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times the parent could be the conservator, but, you you know, you still have to uh, file accountings and things with the court every year. And, you know, people don't know how to do that. So you have to hire a lawyer to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, it really adds up over time. Yeah. So the um, uh, crazy ads about avoiding probate, Mm -hmm. you're really not going to avoid probate per se. What you're going to avoid by having a will is avoiding probate with unknown parties handling your estate at that point. Right. 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 Yeah. You you can't avoid probate with a will, but we can with a trust. mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So um, let's talk about uh, maybe the difference in the how long it takes and the cost going through probate. So we've already established the the downside of probate uh, just from the lack of knowledge and so forth. But I mean, what are the difference in cost and how long will it take? So probate uh, in Georgia on average before COVID was about a year to get through the whole process. And now it's even longer because all of the courts are really backed up. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is the probate courts also handle concealed carry permits. And and when the uh, pandemic happened, everybody decided it was time to apply for a permit. So mm. they're super backed up um, and, and everything is just uh, dragging out further and further. So, you know, 12 months, 14 months. And that's that's if everything is going pretty well to plan. But, you know, if, if anybody disagrees or, or wants to contest the will or, you know, something goes wrong, it can, it can take, uh, years, years. So, uh, so 12 to 14 months, that's if you have a will. Yeah. Okay. And if you, and if you don't have a will, it could, if who, you don't have a knows? will, it's, it's usually a little bit longer because, uh, we have to, uh, figure out who the administrator would be right. and get them approved by the court. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then as far as the costs go, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot in Mm -hmm. Georgia. So in a lot of other States, they have a a statutory cost where it's a percentage of the estate. So Mm -hmm. if you have a a really big estate, it's going to cost a lot to do the probate. So uh, it's like uh, in Florida, they they can take a percentage of the estate. So everybody who has a big estate gets a trust. So they don't have to pay that. Um, But in Georgia, we don't really have that. We have uh, what we call a, um, reasonable cost. Reasonable doesn't really mean anything. There's, there's no definition for it. So reasonable just means as long as the court decides it's okay, it's okay. So we charge hourly for probate in Georgia. So, you know, even if you don't have a huge estate, it can still end up costing many thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. to go through the whole process. Mm. Gotcha. Uh, Oren Ross is with us folks. He's, uh, uh, has his own, uh, firm, uh, doing estate planning uh, work for a variety of clients. Let's talk about trust. I mean, and just there are particular kinds of trust that I, I want to get into, but why have a trust? And what is it, first of all? And why why do you want to have a trust? So a trust is just an agreement. It's a, it's basically a contract where you're, you're stating that you, you're putting assets in it and they're going to go somewhere else once you're not there anymore. Um, or or whoever the beneficiary is, is not there anymore. We're basically just figuring out where things go. So the main reason most people have a trust is to avoid probate. You can do a revocable living trust where you can change anything about it at any point, And it doesn't really change anything about your day-to-day life. But if you pass away, instead of going through probate, those assets go immediately to your spouse or to your kids or wherever you want them to go. And we Mm -hmm. don't have to have the court involved. That sounds pretty attractive. So what what are the issues that folks need to know about setting up a trust like that? Well, I think most people assume that it's, uh, you know, many, many, many thousands of dollars. I, I don't know, $10,000. $10, and I have heard some people that charge that. But, um, you know, 
for a, a basic revocable living trust, it's it's usually you know three thousand, four thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and then the 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 good thing about that is you can avoid probate when you pass away and when your spouse passes away. So mm. it's you know it it looks more expensive up front than just having wills, but in the in the long term it pays for itself because you don't have to pay for the wills and the attorney's fees to go through probate. And that's the kind of trust that is also known as a living trust. Is that, am I correct about that? Right. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's gotcha. a few different kinds of living trusts. So, so you have living trusts and you have testamentary trusts. A living trust is one you set up while you're alive. And a testamentary trust is one that is uh, written into your will. It doesn't exist until your will goes through probate. Gotcha. Let's talk about some of the, some of the particular estate planning needs of business owners. Okay. And what what they need to be thinking about with their business, and particularly those uh, business owners that have partners. Yeah, well, you know, it's really important to figure out what would happen to your business if you weren't here anymore. Can someone access your bank accounts? Uh, can someone manage the business day to day? What happens to your ownership? Where does that go? If if you don't have something laid out, then that has to be figured out by the probate court. And when things go through probate. Assets are frozen, and that can lead to uh, severe consequences for a business. So ideally, you want to have a a business succession plan in place. So figuring out what would happen with your assets, with your business, if you weren't here anymore. And um, as far as the uh, partners, you know, a lot of people want to have uh, life insurance policies that they get with a partner. So if you pass away and your partner needs money to keep the business going, we have a life insurance policy that pays for that. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, inheritance trust. Mm-hmm. There's another, and that I, we're obviously talking about um, children or other uh, dependents you want to leave funds to, I suppose, there. Uh, not just uh, children or dependents. You can you can have one of those for, for anyone okay. that you want. Um, it's basically just protecting the inheritance after you're gone. So mm-hmm. with a living trust, it's designed to distribute assets to your to your family or, or friends, whoever, and then cease to exist. With an inheritance trust, we're, we're protecting it after that. So if you have someone that you want to leave money to and uh, you want to make sure that their spouse can't ever uh, control it or access it, or uh, you want to make sure that if, if somebody passes away, it stays in your family, or if you want to control how much they get and when they get it, you know, if somebody's not that great with investments, uh, you know, somebody else can be in charge of it for them. Or, uh, you know, even people who, um, you know, have drug or alcohol problems. Uh, I've had several clients set those up for those people. You know, they want to be able to take care of them, but they, they won't be able to manage their own money and spend it wisely so you can have someone else do it for them. Gotcha. Uh, Oren Ross is with us, folks. Uh, He has his own firm, Oren Ross and Associates, uh, where he uh, offers estate planning services uh, to a variety of clients. Uh, Oren, I want to switch gears just a minute and talk about you. So uh, uh, talk about your journey, and I guess I'm always interested in, There's a a, for attorneys, Mm -hmm. there are any number of fields and specialties you could have gone into. Uh, Why estate planning? What what is it that... uh, drew you to this particular part of the law? Well, um, a a good portion of that was um, what happened when my grandma passed away. Um, She died in 2003, and uh, I'm from Tifton, so Mm -hmm. we we have farms there. Um, When my grandpa died, he left everything to my grandma, and my uh, family managed it. When she died, um, nobody really did anything. Uh, Everybody assumed that they just inherited things automatically because it was in a corporation. One of my uncles told him that that's how it worked and that's not how it works, but nobody realized that until uh, my parents wanted to buy out my aunts and uncles shares. And then they realized that nobody actually owns any shares. They're still in her estate. Mm. So then we had to go through the whole process of splitting things up. And, uh, it, uh, turned into a little bit of a fiasco because everybody wanted their own little cutouts. Um, so everybody got their own surveyors, they got their own accountants, they got their own lawyers. And um, it took uh, 15 years after she died, fall of 2018, 
they finally got everything figured out. Um, and, and my, my parents ended up paying everybody above fair market value because they were so concerned that somebody was going to come back in 20 or 30 years and say that they got ripped off. Nope. So, mm. and that's my, my family is, is probably, and certainly back then, you know, we were closer than other people's families. Um, mm-hmm. we all got together at my grandma's house every Sunday. Um, I'm, I'm closer with most of, well, not most, some of my cousins mm-hmm. than uh, a lot of people are with their siblings. Mm-hmm. And and then when you get, you know, money and family heirlooms and land, uh, people just get torn apart and it's, yep. it's really not a good scene. So I like the estate planning because, you know, we can kind of set things up ahead of time so that everybody's happy. Everybody knows what's going to happen mm-hmm. and you avoid all of those issues. You don't have to get, uh, you know, the lawyers and the accountants and cert- every, all these people involved who don't need to be involved Right. You just set it up ahead of time and then smooth sailing. Yeah. So let's, uh, I want to get to another particular trust, um, some, something that for some families is vital, special needs trust. Yeah. A lot of people don't uh, know that special needs trusts exist, but uh, they're, they're really important if you, if you want to leave money to someone who has special needs, because if someone is on government benefits, and they receive an inheritance. You know, these means tested government benefits, if you if you get money, you get kicked off. So you receive an inheritance, they get kicked off their benefits, and then they have to spend that money down to less than two thousand dollars before they can reapply. So with a special needs trust, we can not only keep the government benefits, you can still leave them this inheritance and and they don't get kicked off. The the uh basically spend the money on anything that the government isn't paying for. So government benefits basically pay for food and shelter. A special needs trust is there to pay for everything else, Uh, you know, clothes, a car, whatever they may need so that uh, you can keep both and you don't have to just waste an inheritance and and just not receive the government benefits that you would otherwise be entitled to. Yeah. And what we're talking about here is something that that, uh, could be pretty catastrophic for the individual to which, you know, uh, a child or whatever adult child with, with maybe some disability, they're not able to advocate for themselves. Uh, and it's, that's where it's really vitally important. Right. Yeah. A lot of these people, you know, they, it, it takes um, a good amount of money to, to make sure that they're, they're taken care of. They're mm-hmm. in a, you know, these expensive group homes and, and places where they get the, uh, you know, the stimulation and the care that they need, but you know, government benefits usually don't cover that. Right. And if you don't have that inheritance helping out, they wouldn't be able to afford it. So they would be, if they're just getting government benefits, they're going to be in some, you know, tiny little place where they're not getting the stimulation and care that they need. And if you, if you leave them the inheritance and they get kicked off their benefits, then, you know, they have to drain everything down and then they're right back in the same position that they were before. Now, another particularly, um, potentially catastrophic situation involves nursing home expenses and you uh, advocate using trust to avoid the Medicaid spend down. Let's talk about what the Medicaid spend down is first. Okay. So it's, it's basically uh, similar to what I was talking about with the special needs trust. Mm -hmm. So if you go into uh, long-term care and, and you want to apply for Medicaid, they, they check your financial records to see if you qualify. So for a uh, single person who goes into uh, a nursing home and applies for Medicaid, you have to have less than $2,000 in liquid assets. So you can, you can own your house as long as it's worth less than you know, $600,000 or you have less than 600000 in equity. You can have one car and you, you basically have to be broke in order to qualify for Medicaid. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people obviously don't want to have to spend their assets down to $2,000. So uh, there's something called a, a Medicaid irrevocable trust or Medicaid asset protection trust where we can put your assets in this trust, which you can still control. But after they've been in there for five years, the government doesn't consider those to be yours anymore. So even though you can still control it, you know, you can, you can move your investments around, uh, you can sell your house and buy another one. They don't consider it to be yours after a while because you're not the principal beneficiary of it. So we set it up so that if money leaves that trust, 
uh, it has to go to your children or your heirs, whoever those people are. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can't take money out of that trust and give it directly back to yourself. But if you need money out, you can send it to your kids and then they can pay your bills for you or they can hand you the money and you can spend it on what you want. But uh, since you can't directly access your own money, they can't make you spend it on those nursing home expenses. Most most people don't like the way that ends up working. So I uh, I always tell people, you know, to look into things like um, long term care insurance, or uh, you know, they have hybrid life insurance policies with healthcare riders now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can you know try to fund uh, things on your own because. You know, most people don't like having to send money to their children to be able to, you know, get access to their assets. And um, a lot of people also hear Medicaid and and they want to run. So yeah, there are better ways to do it. But for a lot of people, it's, uh, you know, more of a last resort. Or um, if you don't have uh, big retirement accounts, it can work well. But if you have, you know, IRAs or 401ks, uh, the RMDs that have to come out, the required minimum distributions mm-hmm. that have to come out when you turn 72, those we can't protect, so they can be garnished. So if you have a lot of money in a retirement account, it's you know it's probably not as advisable to set up a Medicaid trust. But you know if you just have a big farm somewhere and no retirement accounts, it can mm-hmm. work pretty well. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, Oren, I'm curious be, beyond just um, someone not fa- uh, failing to plan, failing to do uh, the kind of uh, pre-death planning they really ought to do on behalf of their family. What, what, what are some of the big mistakes that you see people make in estate planning? Mm-hmm. Other than failing to plan. <sighs> I guess, I, I guess, go ahead. Well, not being realistic. I, uh, I used to do a lot of seminars before, COVID. And, uh, you know, people would always say, my kids all get along. Everything's going to be fine. Nobody's going to fight over money. You know, they're all doing well. They don't really need this. And and people don't realize that even if people are doing well, or you think they're doing well, money is the biggest stressor for most people. And when you add on top of that, the fact that a parent has just died, people stop getting along really quickly. Mm. I, you know, i I've talked to all these people who say, my my kids all get along. And then after somebody passes away, they call and say, well, yeah, I get along with my sister pretty well, but she married a guy I really don't like. So I don't really want to deal with them. And, you know, everybody just uh, splits off into their own corner and um, things can get pretty nasty. And that's when you have the probates that last two, three, four years. Right. I just finished one of those. Um, I think I think it's third year. I had everybody come in to the office. Everybody agreed. Everybody gets along. Okay. And then right after that, this lady calls and says, I don't trust her. I think she's stealing money. (laughs) Well, turns out she did take a little bit of money out of an account, but Mm -hmm. we had her put it back. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, people don't, she wasn't doing anything inappropriate, but her, her, um, her man had told her, if, if I die, take $25,000 out of my checking so you can pay for the bills and everything. She was just doing what he told her, but sure, yeah, it happens. But And again, that would have been better off if everybody kind of knew that ahead of time, right? And the, yeah, everybody's been, kind of on the same page, definitely right? would have been better off if she had told me that she did that. Right. Uh, <laughs> because I was, you know, vehemently defending her reputation. And then she says, well, I, I, I did do it. Yeah. Like, okay. Put it back. Yeah. Otherwise, there's going to be real problems. Right. 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 So, uh, I'm curious, uh, Warren, if you've got, uh, as we kind of wind down uh, here for today, if you've got a success story, maybe that you could talk about. So, uh, and you know, obviously, you you deal in a confidential business, so you don't you're not going to use names, but just a situation that you feel really good about helping somebody through a tough one. Well, I feel really good about most of them. Um, let's see, one one particular um, was a lady, re- really nice lady, who um, was very concerned that um, if if she passed away and she left money 
for her granddaughter uh, and something happened to her daughter that her ex-husband would end up in control of it. And uh, she said he was, uh, you know, abusive, uh, you know, I think uh, had alcohol problems. Mm. And she was just um, so afraid that, that something was going to happen and her granddaughter's uh, inheritance, you know, what she had for school and, and, and just to live on would be completely destroyed by a man who really shouldn't have any control over it. But, you know, if something happened to her and her daughter, there's nobody else there to take care of her. Mm -hmm. So we set up one of those inheritance trusts where uh, we had someone else in charge of it. Uh, It goes to the daughter. The the ex-husband never has any access, any control, any say over what happens to it. And even if something happens to her and her daughter, we have someone else in charge. So, you know, even if he somehow managed to convince a court that he should be her legal conservator, he would still never have any control over the money we have in that trust. So she really liked that we could, you know, set everything up sure. and, and make sure that, uh, you know, if she's gone, she knows that her granddaughter is going to be taken care of. Wow, great stuff here from uh, Oren Ross, Oren Ross and Associates. Oren, this has been great, and I can't imagine that there aren't folks that, uh, um, well, want to be in touch and need to be in touch even if they don't really want to <laughs> because they don't want to acknowledge uh, uh, what all this means uh, for for themselves, which, I, you know, death happens to all of us, so we've got to plan ahead. But let's uh, send folks your way. Uh, t- tell folks your coordinates, how they can get in touch with you. All right. Uh, so my website is orinrosslaw.com. You can find all our uh, information there. Um, phone number is 678-250-4281. My office is at uh, 300 Colonial Center Parkway at the corner of Old Roswell Road and uh, Mansell. And you can uh, find me on uh, Facebook. Uh, I do a lot of LinkedIn posts. Uh, I don't have a Twitter and I don't want a Twitter. But uh, <laughs> no, no Twitter, no TikTok. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really dance all that much on film. So yeah, I'm with you on that, pal. Uh, Orrin Ross is with us. Uh, Orrin Ross and Associates. Orrin, this has been great. Thanks yeah, so much thanks for, for being having with, me. Yeah, thanks for being with us, uh, folks. If you've got administrative task in your business, uh, maybe you've got uh, uh, you're, you're working on things that you really shouldn't be working on at 11 o'clock at night as a business owner. Uh, that might be bookkeeping. Uh, a variety of things that you know what I'm talking about uh, that you really need to get off your plate so you can spend time in, where your business really needs you. Um, my suggestion is go to officeangels.us and check them out there and see all the services that they offer, administrative tasks, bookkeeping. Uh, they do some marketing services. And uh, that firm is run by my good friend, S.E.S. Cabido at office angels and uh she's terrific uh if you really want to cut to the chase just give her a call 770-442-9246 tell her i sent you and tell her what your problem is and uh, she'll assign an angel that will fly in get the job done and fly out and they do it on an ongoing or as needed basis and uh your life and that of your business will be so much better i promise you that i'm uh uh, I couldn't run my business without Essie and her team. So uh, give her a call. I think you'll be glad you did. And folks, you can find our show on all the major podcast apps. North Fulton Business Radio is a search term. We would love it if you would go on uh, whatever your favorite app is, find the show and subscribe, but give us a five-star review. It's not about me. It's not about Business Radio X. It's about our great guests, a guest like Oren, uh, who do great work for their clients, and we want them to be found. So if you could uh, help them in that regard, you'll be helping us. So thank you for that in advance. Uh, speaking of social media, you can find us uh, using the uh, platform name North Fulton, Biz- B- North Fulton BRX, and we're on LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, yeah, we're on Twitter, barely. But uh, not on TikTok, uh, not uh, not for me, folks. But uh, anyway, come check us out on social media as well. 
So for my guest, Oren Ross, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.